What's up guys, XM360 here, and in today's video I'm going to be reviewing a laser pointer that I got from laserpointerstore.com. They just sent this out to me, and they are one of the sellers of the Thor lasers, and they just came out with this new laser called the Thor H2. So they just sent it out to me, and it comes with this nice little bundle and this really nice carrying case that has like synthetic leather and metal, and it's just really nice looking, even if it isn't the most... Um, expensive case because it does feel a little bit on the lighter side but it does look very nice and it looks well built so anyways this laser I'm not entirely sure it's either their 1.6 watt model or their 3 watt model I'm gonna have a text over the screen when you guys are watching this um, when I hear back from them because I'm waiting for them to respond but for now I'm just gonna say it's either one of those and this is 445 nanometers blue color it comes with some things it comes with the manual and it comes with some kind of wacky batteries they're uh, 26650 batteries I've never even heard of them but they're a bit bigger than 18650 batteries I guess the laser also comes with some little star caps the battery charger and some cheap little um, laser safety glasses now on their website they sell it in black or silver colors and the blue 1.6 watt starts off at 130 but that's not including this bundle right here if you want this bundle with the case and the accessories and the batteries you're looking at 182 dollars and then for the higher wattage mo models of the blue color they have 3 watt and 5 watt the prices go up from there and they also have a a 1 watt 520 nanometer green one and that one goes for close to $500 with the bundle so what I have here I'm gonna guess is probably the lowest model but we'll see and these batteries do appear to be completely unbranded so I'm not gonna be able to get too much information on their capacity I will probably just end up buying some aftermarket ones online though and the laser itself is giant compared to all my other lasers my my Krypton my Arctic my other Thor's this one is huge it comes in two pieces uh, the end cap and then the main base of the laser and some of the features it has a little like little rotating thing on the very bottom of the laser that acts as like a safety switch and when you rotate that the laser cannot be turned on it also kind of has like a light up smart switch that's the button on the side of it that turns it on and off and it has multiple modes it has a low power mode a high power mode and a strobing SOS mode and one of the and it also has a built-in focusing feature as well on the top of the laser and the top of the laser has little um, treads to screw in the star caps and other attachments but one of the first things you're gonna notice about this laser is it looks very very similar to the um, wicked Lasers spider 3 hosts and you see a lot of uh, laser companies um, imitating those hosts but at this point I'm not even mad about it because Wicked Lasers never made a built-in focusing feature and this laser has a built-in focusing feature so they're almost taking what Wicked Lasers did and making it better uh, one other feature I forgot to mention is that it also has a little three little LEDs on the side of it that indicate how much charge the batteries have left and on the very top of the laser you just kind of unscrew or screw in this little um little piece right here I don't think you're supposed to unscrew it all the way but you just turn it a little bit to focus the laser in and out and the treads are on the little hole on top of the laser that's where you would screw in any attachments so I have the batteries inserted in the laser and I can see on the bottom end that the little LED indicator lights are showing too so I'd imagine that is a 66% charge two-thirds and I have the little switch on the bottom set to the on position but you could turn that and I guess if you turn what that does is I believe it just kind of eases up the tension and makes the batteries not make contact fully so it's pretty simple in concept you're basically just pulling out the bottom from the batteries they're loose in there they're not pushing up against both ends and making contact so the laser cannot turn on at least that's how I think it works but I'm just kind of guessing and anyways I'm gonna move on to showing you guys what this looks like in an indoor um, lighted setting and you must use laser safety glasses when using this laser that's not an option 
And I'm aiming it at concrete here. Be extremely careful where you aim this thing because you can easily burn wallpaper, light furniture on fire. You have to be very, very careful with lasers of this power. So as you guys can see, this thing is extremely bright. I click it once for on. I do a quick little double click for high power mode. And then I hold it down for like five seconds to go into SOS mode. It might look a little purplish on the camera, but this laser is a pure blue color. And from what I can tell, the beam is very nicely aligned. I'm not noticing any crookedness to it. One thing I am noticing though is there's like just a, a couple of milliseconds worth of delay when you click it to turn it off. And that is a little strange to me and I don't really like that too much uh, just from my first impression noticing that there's a little bit of a delay when you click the button to turn it off because there's instances where you need to turn it off in an instant and every little millisecond matters so I'm not a big fan of that but I do like the different modes and how easy that they are to use and I like that little LED button as well and testing out that little switch on the bottom you can see as soon as I unscrew that little safety thing the battery indicator lights aren't even on so I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm correct in my assumption that it's just loosening up the batteries so that they're not making the proper connection. And by twisting this little focus feature on the top of the laser, you can see I'm making my beam wider um, at a distance and I'm creating a focal point right in front of the laser where the dot is extremely small and I can do some really good burning and I'm going to do a burning demonstration later in the video. So moving to the next setting, this one's going to be a fully... Um, fully lit outdoor setting midday and you can see that dot is extremely bright even at distances but one thing I notice is that at great distances and this distance right here to that rock wall is probably one to two hundred feet um, the beam diameter and how the beam spreads is not very good at that distance you can see that the dot is very wide and it takes on that rectangular shape that all the blue lasers take but it's just, it's not very well confined and I have the laser focused in as much as I can. Any more focusing I do would just make that dot larger. So not the best beam diameter at long distance, but at shorter distances, it's not that bad. Next up is nighttime. And as you can imagine, this thing looks insane at night. And I always say this about all the blue lasers, but this thing looks like a lightsaber. It really does. It's insanely bright. And this is where you have to be extremely careful with it because this thing's so bright your neighbors will like instantly see this out their windows and they might you know you get frightened of what you don't know and what you don't understand and where it's coming from they might call the cops you never know so you have to be safe about it and be smart and try not to point it at other people's property and definitely don't point it at any vehicles planes animals etc and taking a look at some of the star caps here there's five of them and this first one's going to be like the galaxy effect where you can turn it and make all the dots go in and out of one another. The second one is that circle effect where you've got a couple of different rings of dots and then one dot in the center and you can make them spin by twisting the star cap. The third one is also a galaxy effect but it's kind of like this horizontal um, kind of plane of diagonal lines that create this weird galaxy effect it's hard to explain but it's a little bit different than the first one and then when you twist the star cap it turns everything like it's on a flat two-dimensional panel the fourth one is a galaxy effect only consisting of horizontal lines and it creates all these little bars and then when you twist the star cap you can make the bars spread out or create more fine lines this one's kind of cool to mess around with and I like this one a lot and then the fifth star cap is a series of circles that are all interlinked with one another and when you turn the star cap all of these circles will turn. So the next thing I'm going to do for you guys is the LPM test and I'm not going to be able to get too good of results here because my LPM is a laser B A LPM and it only maxes out at readings of 2 watts and there's a very good chance this laser will exceed 2 watts so we'll see what we can do here but i figure if it goes over the two watt limit that means what i have here is the three watt model of the laser and not the 1.6 but we'll see what the laser says it, it could also be the 1.6 model and that they just have their lasers over spec 
So for the first test, it looks like we're going to be sitting at about 1.9 watts, and this is low power mode I'm testing right now, not high power mode. And I'm going to test low power mode a second time for you guys here. And the second test is also pretty consistent at about 1.9 watts for low power mode. So I'm going to flip it over to high power mode now and test the wattage for that one. So within only a matter of seconds, I completely maxed out my LPM at the 2 watt limit. So this thing is very, very strong and that leads me to believe it's probably the 3 watt model, but like I said, I'm going to put some text on the screen because I'm still not sure if it's over spec for the 1.6 watt model or if it's on spec for the 3 watt model. When I get a response from them, I will put a little text on the video screen here to tell you guys what model I was working with in this video. But I'm going to move on to the burning test now and we're going to try burning a couple of things with the focal point adjusted to the smallest possible beam diameter. And I am using a granite backdrop too, a, a little granite slab, so that I will not burn any of my walls in the background. And that was just cardboard that I threw under there to see if it would smoke and test out the focal point. However, I am going to replay that last clip right there and have you guys listen to the noise that it's making while I'm doing my burning. Ever since I started using this laser, I've noticed it emits a very, um, not too audible, but you can just barely hear it, a little high-pitched noise while the laser is physically on. And when I'm burning stuff, it's almost like the tone of that sound changes. It's kind of weird, and it's a little weird phenomenon that I'm going to have to look into a bit further because it's very strange. I would imagine the noise is being emitted from the laser, so it's very strange to me that I'm hearing the noise and the tone um, adjusting while I'm burning, um, while I'm burning something away from the laser. But anyways, I'm starting off with a couple of matches here, and I stupidly didn't even think to fill up the sink with water beforehand to discard my burned items, but I have water in there now. And I'm gonna do a couple more matches for you guys. They're lighting pretty much instantly. This laser has very good burning capabilities. And I'm gonna attempt to light the wooden part of the match next for you guys. And I was actually able to successfully start a fire on the wooden handle of the match. And that's not something I see with most of my matches because that, that area of the match typically does not light on fire. And it just goes through that electric tape right there, that black electric tape like butter. It went through that insanely fast. I have a little, um, that, that same piece of cardboard here. And it's doing a pretty good job of etching marks on it. It's not cutting directly through it. But I bet you I could get a bit of this to light on fire as well. So I did cut away about 15 to 10 seconds of that to save you guys some time. I was able to get a little tiny red flame to go for a second and you can see a little red ember there. And next I'm just going to try to burn some, uh, some dry wood, some dry bark from outside. And actually while I'm doing this the laser has shut itself off so... I was curious about the duty cycle on this and that is a nice feature that this laser will deactivate itself when it feels that it's being worked too hard, that it's overheating. So I am going to let this cool for 2-3 to three minutes before I turn it back on. And for anybody who's curious, I looked at the times and the laser was on continuously for exactly 3 minutes. So it might not be that it detected it needed to shut off, it might just be that it was on a timer that they've programmed into it. But either way, it's a nice feature to help users prevent themselves from accidentally burning out their diode from leaving it on too long. But anyways, I'm going to use this to move on to the reviewing aspect of this laser now. So overall, I like this laser a lot, but I'm going to start with some of the cons first. I didn't like how that button had a little bit of a delay to it. I wasn't a big fan of that poor beam diameter at long distance. And I wasn't a big fan of that, that very high-pitched tone that was being emitted from the laser. 
Their website also says they have warehouses in both the US and China and it will depend on their inventory whether or not you get it from the US or from China so you may have to wait a little bit longer on shipping depending on where they ship it from. I thought the price was very fair and reasonable. I wasn't a big fan of those no-name brand large batteries. And finally, I thought that the laser needed one of those yellow safety labels so that you know what um, what model laser you're working with and what they've shipped to you. And for the pros, I actually liked the size of this giant laser. I thought it was pretty cool. I love that little button on the side. Besides the delay, I liked all the um, modes on it and how it had that automatic kill feature after three minutes. I thought the kill switch on the bottom worked very well and this thing was extremely bright, extremely powerful and great at burning things. And the price was pretty fair compared with other sellers although I do think they could come down with the price a little bit to be more competitive with eBay sellers and the Thor M2 laser which is an alternative to this one that is a little bit lower powered at about 1.1, 1.2 watts. So overall I'd probably give this one like a 7.5 or an 8 out of 10. And this is sold by laserpointerstore.com. I'll put all the links down below in the video description and any other information that might be helpful. If you guys have any questions at all, leave them in the comments down below. And if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button for more amazing laser videos just like this. So as always guys, thank you for watching from XM360. Thank you.